Welcome to another episode of our Dan Education Series. This time we'll be talking about the issues of running out of gas and how to avoid them. Keep watching. In this episode, we're really talking about Dan's smart guide to air consumption. Because our self-contained underwater breathing apparatus is only as useful as long as the cylinder contains sufficient breathing gas. Scuba equipment allows us to breathe underwater and extends our ability to explore. But without breathing gas, our time is limited and there's the danger of asphyxia and drowning. So, during dive training, you are taught how to calculate your limits of available gas, to monitor the remaining gas pressure, and to return to the surface in a timely manner with enough gas to inflate your buoyancy compensator. Even so, in spite of the training, running out of breathing gas is the most common dive incident and the number one cause of diving fatalities. Even the most skilled divers can make mistakes and run out of gas. So in this series we cover the most common, the, in fact the 13 most common errors that lead to out-of-air emergencies and then how to avoid those situations. How do we understand the breathing gas needs? Well, the breathing rate depends on your level of exercise and depth. The higher the level of exercise, the more oxygen you need and the more carbon dioxide you will produce. So, in order to flush the carbon dioxide from the lungs while diving, you must inhale more breathing gas. The relationship between depth, pressure and exercise is taught in detail during diver training. But the bottom line is that the deeper the depth and the higher the level of exercise is, the greater the demand will be for the breathing gas. So, what are the most common causes of out-of-air emergencies? Well, lack of awareness is a big one. And number one is diving too deep with the requirement for decompression then ultimately requiring more gas than was calculated. Not enough gas for decompression stops and the bottom line is that most dive cylinders do not make provision for enough gas for obligatory decompression stops and so running out of gas at depth then puts you at risk if you've done a long relatively hazardous emergency ascent. You may maximize your time at shallower depths and more easily reach the surface in an emergency and that may be a very good strategy at avoiding running out of gas. The second is staying too long. Sooner or later you will consume your gas reserves. So determine the cylinder pressure at which you will need to turn back and start your ascent in advance. During the dive, actively monitor your cylinder pressure and turn back on time. Third, working too hard. Fighting a current, hunting or lacking buoyancy control can affect air consumption. Exertion at depth may speed up depletion of your cylinder by up to 20 times. If you're not accustomed to diving in strong currents or surf, seek training prior to diving in these environments. Number four, not monitoring your pressure gauge. Be air aware. Monitor your air supply. Check your pressure gauge regularly and communicate your supplies with your buddy. Number five, ignoring anxiety as a factor. Anxiety changes all the calculations and may deplete tank reserves faster than vigorous exercise. So try to maintain normal breathing. But if you do feel anxious, 
keep a closer eye on your gas supplies because they may dwindle more rapidly than usual. Now a couple of procedural problems. So number six, starting with less than a full cylinder. Regardless of how short an immersion you may contemplate, don't start your dive with a cylinder that isn't full. Never descend to retrieve a lost piece of equipment or an anchor with a cylinder that is nearly empty. Seven, remember to open your cylinder valve all the way and check that breathing through the regulator does not cause a swing in the pressure gauge every time you breathe because that indicates obstruction. Number eight, frequent depth changes and buoyancy compensating device adjustments or yo-yo diving then which means the BCD is frequently changed and filled and emptied can all quickly deplete your gas supply. So yo-yo diving increases the risk not only of the loss of gas supply but also increases the risk of pulmonary barotrauma and decompression sickness. So avoid doing that. Number nine, omitting pre-dive checks and buddy checks. Use a printed pre-dive checklist to prevent mental lapses. The mental checklist really doesn't always do the trick. And then lastly, there's some regulator issues. The regulator that you use may affect the air consumption. Your secondary regulator may have a slow leak and your regulator may free flow due to debris. The mouthpiece may decouple from your regulator or your dive buddy may accidentally knock your regulator out of your mouth. And all of these things may lead to a sudden increase in the loss of gas from your dive cylinder. In terms of prevention, rinse your regulator after diving and conduct regular maintenance on your diving equipment. If it's worn out or out of date, it may more likely cause an excess loss of gas. Make sure you secure your spare regulator and don't let it just drag on the bottom. If the regulator starts to free flow, attempt to flush it because that may help displace the debris that is to blame. Remember that you can still breathe from a free flowing regulator, but your gas supply will not last as long as you thought and you should initiate an ascent. Number 11, buoyancy compensating device issues. Inflator leaks or tears in your buoyancy compensator can deplete your air supply quickly. So rinse your BCD after diving and conduct regular maintenance and preventative checks for leaks. Your pressure gauge if your pressure gauge is integrated with your computer, a computer error may also affect your pressure gauge. And if your cylinder pressure does not decrease with the time of the dive, you may have a problem and may need to terminate the dive prematurely. Make sure, therefore, that you use a properly calibrated gauge. Note that some gauges will not indicate zero even when the tank is empty. And to avoid this problem, make sure to return to the surface when your gauge indicates 50 or at the least 35 bar. Number 30, burst o-ring or burst hoses. O-rings should be replaced regularly and carry with you spare o-rings for minor leaks and be ready to replace them if there's any question. Don't try and service your regulator on your own. Opening and servicing a regulator should be done by a certified maintenance professional. So now after looking at the 13 causes, let's look at some safety tips. Firstly, maintain your equipment regularly and inspect any rental equipment very carefully. Secondly, 
use a written pre-dive checklist and plan the maximum depth and duration of your dive that can be done safely with the available gas supply. Thirdly, open the cylinder valve all the way. Consider buying a cylinder with an open-close valve indicator. Four, conduct a pre-dive test breath on your regulator and make sure your cylinder is full before the dive. Also check the gas line and complete an in-water body check before descending. Five, carry an independent emergency gas reserve. Two independent gas sources are better than one. It may help you in an emergency or if another diver requests your breathing gas. Six, monitor your cylinder pressure at regular intervals. Seven, stay within your diving limits. Eight, turn back when you have depleted half your gas supply because that will conserve enough gas for you to get back and to maintain positive buoyancy at the surface. Nine, adjust your buoyancy in protected shallow water and if you find that there are buoyancy problems abort the dive and fix the problem first. Signaling. The universal sign for low on air is a fist held close to the chest and that will indicate to your buddy that you are low on air and will allow you to make an ascent in a planned way. Remember that safety starts with you. Running out of gas is a mistake with potentially serious repercussions. So plan to have enough gas to get to the surface. It's not complicated, but it is essential. Thank you for listening to this episode. And remember, follow us on the social media groups, Twitter, Facebook, and of course, subscribe to this channel. Thank you for watching and thank you for supporting Dan.